everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. I thought we could have some fun in today's video and go over my bin of materials that I use to teach place value in my grade three and grade four classroom. I wanna start a series where I go over all of the activities that I've prepared or that I've purchased or that I've gathered and I have organized them all depending on the unit that I teach in math. So I have a place value bin, I have a bin for multiplication and division, I have a bin here for telling time and money. I have a bin for fractions. I have a really cool game here that I'll talk about uh, in one of my videos. And what do I have in this one? Some addition, subtraction. I have a bunch of different bins that I want to go over. I also have picked a few books here that are lining the shelf behind me. Those are some math books that I like to uh, use to teach concepts and to read aloud to my class. So I'm gonna have a whole video dedicated to math read aloud books. I'm gonna have a video dedicated to math stations and how I tackle math stations. But today's video is going to be all about diving into my place value bin. Now, if you are interested in the series and if you're interested in seeing all of the other activities that I have prepared in my bins and you wanna hear about the books, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because then that way you'll see the next videos when they come out. So let's open up my bin. I'm just gonna go through each activity here I'm going to tell you if I made it myself or I'll, if, uh, if I purchased it or if I found it for free like a free download and I'll tell you how I prepped it so I'm on mat leave right now I'm at home in my kids playroom <laughs> um, and so I actually haven't even gone through these bins I haven't sorted or you know made them pretty or wiped them down or anything so you're literally seeing these as they left my classroom so anyways let's dive in the very first thing is a very worn out Ziploc bag, but it still works. This is a game that I made myself and I even have the rules on here. It's just a matching game. I printed this game off myself. I probably even made this game myself, but basically what I did was I put together just pictures of different amounts, place value amounts, like base 10 blocks with some digit cards and together the students have to work together as a group to find the matches of all of these cards so they all match together so um, I believe these ones are they go up to a thousand so place value up to a thousand because that's what we used to teach in grade three but now place value has bumped all the way up to 100,000 but anyways I'm still gonna keep this game typically when I do a math station this will be one of the stations so working collaboratively as a group can you beat the timer before you move on to the next station and can you find all the matches for these? So that's one game that we play. Next up, I just have a very simple, I have who has game. I don't know where I found this. I probably, I, I might've purchased it on TPT. I don't know, it's really old. This is a wonderful game that I use in my class to have kids practice reading the base 10 blocks and the numbers correctly. So they have to say 193 instead of saying 100, uh, you know, 193 or something like that. Um, and also recognizing the different values of the place 10, base 10 blocks. Okay, another game that I have in my place value bin. This is a free download. I actually found it for you and I will link it down below in case you are interested in, interest, interested in it. This is a roll it, so you're rounding to the nearest 10. And so the kids just need a die and they need some, uh, they need some little like chips to put on top. And then they have to roll and round to the nearest. And then they either have to make a line across or a line up and down or whatever. So I printed these on cardstock paper, laminated them, ready to go. This is another station, especially because there is a rounding outcome in the grade three curriculum. So that's a wonderful game to play. This next set, I'm actually gonna pull out all of them because there's a lot here. I have two different versions. I have a full page version and I have half double-sided pages. So I'm gonna talk about the full page first. I noticed teaching grade three that there was a a real lack of understanding of how to go from nine, 99 to 100 or from 109 to 110 and just I had I, I noticed students were struggling that area so I created these one pagers let me see if I can find a good one I created these one pagers here's a great example 
where students just have to fill in the blank. That's it. It's just a regular piece of paper inside a plastic sheet and they have to fill in the blank and they have to figure out how am I advancing forward? How am I skip counting? So in this case, you're skip counting by twos. So 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, yada, yada. And then they have to learn to sweep to the left, of course. But then here, they have to figure out that it goes 100, 102, 104, 106, 108, and it keeps going. So I find this is a really good place to start in terms of skip counting, but also for students to understand which number changes when they are writing them down. So I have a bunch of different types of these. I have skip counting by twos. I have skip counting by fives. I have skip counting by threes. Um, I even have just advancing by one. So 235, 236, 237. The kids have to look at this and they have to be able to recognize which number is required next. So I have a bunch of these one pagers. The way that I like to use this is when I do math stations, I like to use this as an individual activity. So the kids take this, they take a page, a random page, and they take it back to their desk with a whiteboard marker and they fill it out and then they're supposed to write their name on the back and hand it in on my desk. That way I can just have a really quick glance to see who was able to figure it out and fill the chart in before the end of the timer. And my stations are usually about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and so they are, and I tell them, you don't have to fill out the chart, just get as much as you can done in the time that you have, and then um, just write your name on it so I can see how you're doing. This is just a quick check-in for me. Um, I might also hand this out to the group, you know, five minutes before the end of the day or something like that and have them fill it out. So I really quickly put these together. Nothing beautiful about these, but they're effective. <laughs> Same thing goes with these. I guess these are a little bit more beautiful because they are like colorful. Oh look, I didn't even wipe that one off. <laughs> There's a student example for you. So these are printed on colored paper because the color denotes how I'm skip counting by. So for example, here we're going from 50 to 59. So this is skip counting by threes. So orange is skip counting by threes and they have to figure that out. And then on this side, blue is skip counting by fives. And it's just a half a page really quickly. Um, I staple them onto a single piece of cardstock and then I put them in a plastic sheet and I cut them and I taped the side that I cut so that the page can't fall out. So um, again, this is a really easy activity that kids can pull out for a math station and they get, pra they get to practice two different kinds of skip counting. Whereas this page was, you know, you have to skip count by ones or whatever, count by ones. This one, they're practicing two different varieties. Um, I also have pinks and I have greens as well. So just to keep them on their toes, I have a whole bunch of these ready to go. And I should give these a good wipe because <laughs> they're, look, they're showing their age a little bit, but you know what, they are so effective. And they literally barely cost me anything to make these. So just another idea for you. Okay, a staple in every classroom is a place value bingo game. So these ones, when I had a little bit of money left to purchase uh, things for my classroom, um, I went ahead and I bought a lot of these kinds of bingo games for math. So I have telling time bingo, fractions bingo, you know, addition, subtraction, whatever bingo, and place value bingo. So, you know, they have to cover up if there's a place value, if there's a four in the tens place or something like that. So um, I love these place, I love these bingo games for sure. This is a really fun, easy game that you can whip out as a teacher. All it requires is a ruler of some kind. I like using these flexible ones and I'll show you why. So you'll get the students to guess numbers. So we'll use the side that has uh, centimeters on it. So just had to make sure it was centimeters. And so this ruler goes from zero, and I'll show my students zero, all the way to 150. So I'm going to think of a number as a teacher and students are gonna take turns guessing. So for example, I'm thinking of a number and let's say student Anna says, is it 50? And I'll say the number is greater than 50, which means I'm going to bring my hands in. So this is starting at zero. I'm gonna go all the way to 50 and they can visualize that 
these numbers are not needed, so I'm starting with 50. So the number is now between 50 and 150. And then someone will say, is it 100? And then I'll say, it's less than 100. And then I'll bring this hand in all the way to the 100 spot, right there. And now we'll see the number is somewhere in between 50 or 100. But here's the catch. If a student wasn't paying attention, or if they didn't really quite grasp it, and they guess a number outside of this, outside of the parameters, then that's a point for me. And I'll just keep a tally on the board. And if I get three points, then I win the game. <laughs> but if they manage to guess it without um, losing three points, then they win the game. So a fun little easy game that you can play with a flexible ruler like this. I forget what it feels like to sit on the ground for so long. I was a preschool teacher for six years and I was used to sitting crisscross, but just then my leg literally fell asleep. So in between takes, I had to go and walk around and wake up my legs and I'm sitting on a foam block right now just to keep it real right now. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's keep going. So the next activity that I have is a great activity for students that are just starting to understand the concept of place value. And this one did take a bit of prep, but I'm happy that I did it. Um, it's basically just place value blocks and it's numbered one to 30, I believe. Yeah, one to 30. And you would take all of these off and you would mix them up on the table and the students would have to count the place value of the blocks and then they would have to find the correct match. And so I just went to dollar store and I got these little teeny tiny circle Velcros and I put them on the back, I made sure to laminate everything, and so this is a fantastic activity to differentiate for those students that need that extra bit of help. It's a place value that goes just from 1 to 30. Okay, the next game is a little bit more involved, but the kids really like it. It's called Build an Ice Cream Sunday. This one is by Math Geek Mama for 123homeschoolforme.com. So it's probably a free uh, download. If I do find it for free, I'll link it down below so you guys can grab it. But basically, it says use your ice cream bowl and ice cream scoops to build a sundae. So, here we go. All the materials that I need are in here. They're all in this one bag. And I'm going to open it up. It's a bag and a bag and a bag. <laughs> the kids have to pick a bowl and it tells them what the number is. So in this case, it's 670. And then using the different scoops and cherries, they have to build that ice cream. So we have 100s. So how many 100s do they need? How many scoops of 10 do they need? And then the cherries are the ones. So let me just find a cherry. Hold on a second. The cherries have like a one or they have a seven or they have like an individual number on them. And so they have to build their sundae based on the bowl that they picked. And then once they built it, then they write down how many hundreds did they use, how many tens, how many ones, and what was the final number um, to determine the value. So this is a really fun game for the kids to play. There are a lot of parts and pieces though. So if you do plan on making this, um, it's like a Netflix kind of activity where you print everything off, you laminate it, you cut it out, and then I put them in bags. So I put all the scoops and pieces in one bag, I put all of the Sunday bowls in the next bag. I printed this off, I laminated it, and then it all goes inside of a giant Ziploc bag. There. So I have this game, I think I have two versions of it. And the last game that I have in my place value bin, I have multiple versions of these and I'm going to show you um, the differences here. So. This game is called Place Value Pirate. I don't remember where I got it. I think I got it, oh, mathgeekmama.com. So the same um, one as before. Uh, it was probably a free download. And I printed off, They have. she has two versions, I believe. This one is place values up to 300, and then she has place values, sorry, up to the 100s place. And this one is place values up to the thousands place. So that's kind of what it looks like. And inside each bag, so I color coordinated these. So this one is blue. It's going to go with the blue cards. I just colored them with a marker, honestly. Just keep it really simple. Um, 
I printed it all on white and then I just colored them myself. So I printed on white, colored it myself. And so it says, you know, move to the closest number that has a three in the hundreds place. And then, this is fun, these little markers, I just got from the dollar store. They're those little like wooden cubes. And I just have like one of each color. So five kids can play at a station, which is usually the maximum number of kids that I have in a group. But we all know class sizes are going up this year, right? So anyways, I have place value pirate. And so these are all color coordinated. Again, laminated for durability. They all go in a Ziploc bag. I have one, two, three, four, and I swear I have a yellow one somewhere. I'm sure I do. It's probably in the wrong bin. <laughs> but Place Value Pirate, it's a wonderful game. I tell the students too, I give them the choice. You can go the simpler route with just three place values, or if you want a challenging route, you can take this one. You can play all five kids in one game where you guys can split up two versus three or whatever. So yeah, I just went through all of the games in my Place Value bin. Hope you guys enjoyed that I plan on going through all the rest of my bins and my I have a box here I'll just show you really quickly I have every teacher's dream bin right next to me it's literally labeled math manips and games but it's kind of like a box of things that don't quite fit in any one particular bin but I might need them for multiple games or something but if I just open it up I have fun things in here like like little place value pieces, like tokens. These like counting chips. So if they have to cover up, you know, a place, you're gonna love this. I have different kinds of dice in here. So these are double dice. Operations dice. Like so fun. Lots of good stuff. And then I actually have like actual games that need a home. Oops. <laughs> came out of the box. Uh, I just got this at a garage sale action. Actually, it's pumpkin patch math game. So it's like addition and subtraction. So I got that. I even made my own. This is for multiplication and division. If you've ever heard of the game Kaboom, you'll know what I'm talking about. So anyways, I have this random box of math games and stuff that I need to deal with. But um, yeah, it's it's just full of extra supplies that I might need for a game, like if I'm missing a marker or a cool die or something like that. So I hope you enjoyed my place value bin. I just wanted to show you the items that I have ready, ready to go for my students. Once you make the game once, you don't need to make it again. And if you're teaching like grades three, four, even five, I feel like once you make it once, you can use it for all of those grades. I use these interchangeably for grades three and four. So all it takes is honestly a little bit of time to scour the internet and look at people's websites, see what people are giving away for free because there are a lot of blogs out there where people want you to sign up and download this free game, which is totally fine. Um, that's, how I uh, that's how I got a lot of my games as well. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching me as I un unpacked my place value bin. I'm going to go over my other bins as well. Like I said, I have addition and subtraction I'm going to go through, multiplication and division. I have a fractions bin. I have a geometry bin. I have a telling time and a money bin. I want to go over this cool game too that I got for free. Ah, I'm so happy. I'll tell you how I got it for free by the way. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in all of that, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss a single video that comes out of my series. I'm also going to talk about math stations and how I do math stations, math journals, uh, guided math, things like that. And of course, I have my Classrooms Across Alberta series where I am traveling across Alberta touring your classrooms. I am leaving this weekend actually to be touring a classroom in Grand Prairie, so I'm super excited for that. I will be filming all of that and you guys will see. As always, thank you so much, everybody, for your loyalty and for your support. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.